resistant against external forces. That is, the plant is able to withstand opposition forces or external forces, is able to stand against the odds in the environment. So the main supporting tissues in plants are parenchyma, cholenchyma, and sclerenchyma. The main supporting tissues in plants are parenchyma, cholenchyma, and sclerenchyma. Parenchyma. Parenchyma is made up of living cells with thin cellulose cell wall. It's made up of large vacuoles with frequent speed markings not differentiated for specific functions. The parenchyma has large vacuoles that has frequent piece uh, markings that are not specified or specialized. Then parenchyma is found in leaf mesophyll, then the stem medulla and in the cortex. The stem medulla and the cortex of the stem. The function of the Parenchyma is mainly in food synthesis, so it's responsible for food synthesis in plants. Also, it is found in plant tissue to store food and water. The parenchyma stores food and water in plant tissues. Also, parenchyma gives firmness and turgidity to the stems of herbaceous plants. It helps the stem of a bit short plant to be sturdy. Example of such plants, we have the Tylenol, that's the water leaf, Tylenol triangulare. Then we have the Tridas procumbens. When they are sturdy, they have sap filled vapor. So you find, when you, for instance, when you break your water leaf, you cover that you see water, that's what is called the sap filled vapor. That's the sap, the liquid part. Then meristematic ones, that is meristematic parenchymas, form cork and protect the plants from injury. Meristematic. I said earlier that meristematic and meristematic regions are regions of growth and cell division. That is that's the for example the root tip and the, the root tip and the apex of the stem. Those are the points that are actively dividing and is growing. So meristematic parenchyma forms cork. The that cork is like a covering, external covering. Maybe when there is an injury, it's covered that there is a kind of scar on the plants. There's just, just a path. Like, and the plant produces an exudate that covers that wound. Just like in humans, so when there is injury, the blood clots and the place begins to heal up. So, this parenchyma also performs a similar function in plants informing cork and protecting the plants from injuries. Now we move on to talk about cholenchyma. Cholenchyma is a specialized type of the parenchyma cell. Then it is the one that is first formed supporting tissue in growing organs. Is cholenchyma is first formed supporting tissues in growing organs such as in the young stems, in leaves and flowers. The cholenchyma is located in the hypodermis, just beneath or below the epidermis, the cortex of the stem and in the roots, you see, cholenchyma. Then, cholenchyma gives rigidity, hardness and support to the plants. The cell walls of cholenchyma are irregularly thickened with cellulose and pectin. Also, cholenchyma gives mechanical support in the cortex of the plants. The cholenchyma has resilient tissue, that is, the tissue is flexible and elastic, enabling bending, twisting, and strains of the stem. You know, the cholenchyma is one that is responsible for that ability in the plants. You can bend it, you can twist it when there is wind blowing the flowers and the leaves. So it's resilient it's to all those external forces. Now we move on to talk about this last type of supporting tissues in plants, that is the sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma is the main supporting tissue in plants. It is located in the pericycle and is made up of cells with heavily, made up of cells, heavily ticking, heavily ticking cells 
which gives hardness, rigidity, and mechanical support to the plant. It is not extensible and is not formed in quantity until the young tissues are fully differentiated. Unlike cholenchyma, we say the parenchyma, they are not differentiated, but in sclerenchyma, they are formed in differentiated cells or differentiated, differentiated tissues. Also, the sclerenchyma is associated with the vascular tissues. The sclerenchyma tissue exists as fiber and spherics. The fibers are long, narrow cells with thickened cell walls, which are finely tapered at the ends. They are tapered at both ends. Then they provide flexibility and strength into the plant and prevent it from breaking up. So it's fibers that is responsible for the flexibility and the strengthening of the plant that prevents breaking up. Also, the second part of the sclerenchyma um, is the sclerens. The sclerens are short isodiametric cells. That is, they are, the cells are equal in three dimensions and they form the part of the seed coats and the nut shells. Now, we talk about another conducting tissue, the xylem. The xylem is the water conducting tissues in plants. It's the one that takes up the water from the soil to the roots, from the roots of the plants into the other parts of the plant for even distribution. Then the xylem consists of dead hollow cells, tracheids, and vessels, which are conduction elements. The xylem also contains additional supporting tissues in the form of the fibers and the spherids. Also, there are tracheids in the xylem. Tracheids are dead and empty water conduction elements. They are dead and they are also empty water conduction elements. They are long and elongated. They are tapered, they have tape points, woody plant cells, and they are perforated by pits and narrower than the xylem vessels. The xylem is a water conducting tissue in plants, like I said. Then also, we talk about the vessels. Vessels are from a chain of elongated cylindrical cells that are placed end to end. They conduct water and dissolve salts. They are responsible for support. The wood fibers. The wood fibers give strength and flexibility to the plants. They also prevent the plant from breaking up. The scarers give added support to the plants. Then the xylem parenchyma stores starch and sometimes they contain tannins and crystals. The next conducting tissue that we'll be talking about is the phloem. Phloem is the food conducting tissue in plants. Just as the xylem is a water conducting tissue, phloem is one that conducts food. You know, plants undergo photosynthesis and it's the leaf majorly that undergoes that. So, the phloem is the one that carries the food substance from where they are produced to other parts of the plant. The phloem consists of the sieve tubes, column of living cells with perforated ends that allow the passage of substances, that is, the food substances from one cell to the next. Also, the phloem consists of companion cells, consists of fibers, the parenchymatous packing tissues, which stores which is the storage and the packing tissue. Then we talk about the uses of fibers to plants. The fibers are often elastic, so they are uh, of a commercial purpose or commercial importance. We have the flax. Flax and M are examples of fibers, and they are cultivated for the following purposes. They are cultivated for cloth. They are used in making some clothes, then in mats, mats that we sleep on, bags, ropes, sponge, you know those sponge that the Fulanese or the outer people sell around, that's woody sponge. That's another importance of the flax and the air. The fibers they support the plants to maintain rigidity. Then they make the plants resilient 
and flexible. The plant is strong. It's flexible at the same time, strong that it can resist some external forces. Then it helps the plants to be able to carry weight. The fibers enable the plants to carry weight. Then it protects the softer parts of the plant's body. The fibers protect the fiber, the plants, the softer parts of the plant's body.